I'm mostly going to be focusing on cards that release this year because we have a ton that are flying under the radar. As always, if you appreciate these videos or any videos I create, subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot. So the first one we're going to talk about is actually a reprint, but it's a reprint of one of the better equipments ever made, and that is Basilisk Collar. Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. Only around a buck fifty. You could find this cheaper. There are printings of Basilisk Collar that are closer to one dollar. It's all the same. You're still getting a deal. Death Touch and Lifelink for only really three mana invested. The reason why this equipment's been great, it's not just for the keywords alone in combat, but mostly for that Death Touch and how it can interact with creatures that have any ability that can deal damage. Meaning you would only have to deal one damage to a creature because it has Death Touch, you'd be able to kill it. That's the strength of Death Touch as a keyword. You don't have to deal combat damage to a creature in order to kill it. Maybe the safest card that you can pick up because it's super cheap and it is proof and everybody knows about it, and I'm sure you remember the days when this was a lot harder to find and a bit more expensive. The next card we have is from Kamigawa Nia Dynasty Mirror Box. This 3 mana artifact allows you to ignore the legend roll, so you can have several of the same legendary permanent out there. Of course in Commander this is important for token creation. Again, it's another buck fifty card, but for what it does, it's actually great value. With Basilisk Collar, you could find more expensive equipment that will give Death Touch. With Mirror Box, there are only so many cards that do this. Next we have Halo Fountain from Streets of New Capenna. Most expensive card in this video at around 320 But that's for a great reason. This is a unique win con and win cons are very popular in Commander. You have multiple opponents. It's not that efficient to have to attack and deal combat damage, bring them down to zero that way. So any alternate way around that is going to be appreciated. And the third activated ability says you can pay 5 mana and tap it to untap 15 tapped creatures you control to win the game. I love this card. I love how janky that is compared to the average win con. You actually feel like you're building up to something that you can win with and it's not going to feel cheap to your opponents. It's not going to be like the average two card infinite combo where you just win on the spot and you did it all in the same turn. If you're building up a board where you have 15 creatures that you need to tap either through combat or other means, everyone else is probably going to think you deserved it. So I love this card. It's also a mythic so it has that going for it. A little bit harder to find. Maybe not the most urgent to pick up in this video, but this is what Commander is all about. These are the cards that get you to think about building your decks. Next we have Defy Defiler of Faith, but really any of the Defilers, I'm absolutely salivating at these. We get an amazing cycle of creatures that benefit you if you want to get around paying extra costs. So instead of paying that extra mana, you can pay two life. That has allowed players to benefit off of combos just that first part, but then you follow it up on a cast trigger, where with Defiler of Faith, you get a pretty decent one. You get a 1-1 every time you cast a white permanent. So you're building up a board presence. Even if you're not comboing, you're still getting tremendous value off of these. And the way that these cards go, we've seen this before with Cycles. We've seen it with the Titans, the Primordials, the Cavaliers are good in Commander. There's always a cycle of creatures that maybe they aren't amazing individually, but what they provide is just absolute consistency. What you see is what you get. Very easy to throw into just any deck. Next we have Aboleth Spawn from Battle for Baldur's Gate. At around 285, we have maybe the most unique card in this entire video. Great keywords flash in Ward 2. Probing Telepathy whenever a creature entering the battlefield under an opponent's control causes a triggered ability of that creature to trigger, you may copy that ability you choose new targets for the copy. You're stealing ETB triggers, which is fantastic. The cherry on top is that it does have flash, so if you're going up against an ETB heavy deck, that's how they win the game is off of that advantage. You flash this into play as they're casting one of their big creatures, you get to steal that ETB and absolutely rub it in their face. I don't even think it needed that word of two, but all of that on three mana? I mean, this looks little fish has been swimming under the radar. And moving on to flying under the radar, we have Kairi the Swirling Sky. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, the cheapest card in this video, may be the safest pickup at only around 72 cents. But you get another blue creature with ward, this time a ward of three. And while it maybe has one of the least impressive death triggers of all the dragons from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, you should factor in that flying in ward. This is still a dragon you can throw into popular commander decks using commanders like Miram, Sentinel, Worm. We've got the Ur Dragon. I mean, any dragon deck that you would normally play is still going to love to take advantage of this. If there is a downside, it's that its second mode is more focused on instants and sorceries, which in a dragon deck is going to be pretty limiting, but... They're not awful modes, it's just that they're not as good as the modes you get with the other dragons. Again, you get probably one of the better keywords of the past couple years in Ward. Still great stats for what you're paying in mana. It's not the most impressive card in the video, again, but 
for $100. This Mythic, I think, is maybe the most underrated pickup. And another one that certainly is, and I've been talking about this card for a long time, Body Launderer from Streets of Nuka Penna, $1.63. I don't know what else needs to be said about this. It's a fantastic all-star. You get an amazing death trigger for non-token creatures, which is maybe the only downside that it has to be a non-token creature dying. But you get a connive trigger. And Connive has been maybe the most underrated ability all year. It's a nice little loot effect that also can make the creature bigger. And when it dies, you have a way of bringing a creature back from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's an engine that can also get you something back. What's not to like? I think for the price you're paying here, again, we're looking at another incredibly underrated mythic. I would not be surprised within a year's time that this goes up tremendously. Then we have Runvelt Horde Master from Dominaria United, $1.71. You have your typical Goblin Lord thing, like giving other goblins plus and plus one. But the appeal here is, of course, that trigger. Whenever it or another goblin you control dies, you exile the top card of your library. If it's a goblin creature card, you get to cast that card until the end of your next turn. Which I think is absolutely perfect for goblin decks because your average goblin isn't going to be super expensive, giving you a way of recovering it in a color where recovery is very difficult. But this time, instead of recovering in the sense of bringing all your creatures back from the graveyard, you're capable of replacing a board after a board wipe with brand new goblins. And while you maybe won't won't replace every single one of them. In an aggressive goblin deck, chances are your deck is mostly goblins. So I like our chances going into that kind of situation. The next card is actually the newest card here from the Brothers War. Mishra Tamer of Makfawa, I've been crazy about this. Easily the most underrated commander going into the set. It has maybe the best ward that we've seen so far in sacrificing a permanent. The real benefit here with building around this is that you can make an entire artifact deck where your whole goal is to use entomb type of cards to fill your graveyard with massive artifacts that you can easily bring back for only three mana. Only $1.68, and I think that this has a utility purpose in those artifact decks. As one of the 99, it's also a great way to protect your other permanents. If there's a downside to this, it's that you are pushing it at around five mana for maybe not quite the power you'd be looking for, but you have good abilities here to build around. All it would take is throwing on a Lightning Greaves to Mishra, so that your opponent would have to sack a permanent to get rid of the Lightning Greaves, and then they'd have to sacrifice a permanent to get rid of Mishra. And few people want to give up permanents, even fewer than giving up life. Next we have Miram Sentinel Worm from Battle for Baldur's Gate. $1.61 for maybe one of the most popular commanders this year. People love Dragon Tribal Commanders, maybe the most popular tribe, period. And with Miram, you didn't get your typical five-color go all out and play every dragon ever made type of commander. You got one that absolutely abused legendary dragons, seeing as you could make a token copy of one that is legendary, but the token itself is not. I'm still big on this, it is very cheap, but how dragons typically go is that if it's something that can provide a ton of power, all you need to do is wait and it'll go up in price. And in my opinion, all year, this has been the best dragon. We also see another ward ability. Wizards of the Coast has gone crazy with just giving a lot of blue creatures that ward and giving different ward costs with Mishra. So I really like seeing that. It's another way of just adding more interaction to the game. It's not going to absolutely prevent your opponents from interacting with it, but it is going to make them think twice. So anyway, let me know what you think about these 10 commander pickups. Again, this was mostly for cards released this year, making it a bit easier to find them, I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if any cards that you think are good pickups for 2022. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.